in this session let us start solving stability problems okay in stability analysis will be there too much of analysis will be there but problems like you know very simple simple problems they will give the two most of the problems are for two marks only let us see here a power system consisting of two synchronous generators a and b of ratings 250 mva and 500 mva with inertia of 1.6 per unit one per unit respectively on their own base MV ratings. Actually, they should have written like, you know, uh, inertia constants. It's not inertia. The equivalent per unit inertia constant for parallel system on 100 uh, MVA common basis. Basically, there are two things, coherent systems, non-coherent. Okay. Are like, you know, sinking together, swinging together, not swinging together. But like, you know, most of the cases, it will be swinging together only. And till now in gate, they did not give swinging not together non-coherent systems. So let us consider it as coherent case only and let us continue. Okay. So in coherent case, what do we know? G equivalent, H equivalent equal to G1 H1 plus G2 H2. Okay. So how much is this G1 250 MV into what is H1 1.6 plus what is G2 capacity 500 MVA into what is h2 is going to be 1 okay now what is h equivalent h equivalent equal to the same plus 500 into 1 divided by what is g equivalent 100 mv this is going to be the answer okay so i got 9 per unit now let us take a second problem a 500 megawatt 21 kV 50H 3 phase 2 pole synchronous generator having a rated power factor of 0.9 has moment of inertia they have given J kg meter square and the inertia constant H will be okay. So what is the definition of inertia constant H is going to be so many megajoules per MBA. Right. So we have to calculate mega joules in the sense kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is nothing but half J omega square. Okay. So this is going to be half. How much is J? 27.5 into 10 cube into what is omega 2 pi n by 60 2 pi. Okay. How much is n? 2 pole 50 H. 2 pole 50 H 3000 RPM. So, 3000 by 60 omega square. Okay. Now, you please keep the kinetic energy here. And what is MVA? For example, same kinetic energy I am going to keep here. Okay. And after that, how much is MVA? 50 megawatt they have given. Power factor they have given. So, 50 megawatt divided by 0.9. Yes, 0.9 will give you MVA. You will get the answer. And I got the answer of 2.442. 442 megajoules per mv anyway okay so that's it now let us think of one more problem actually this problem like you know uh, it is related to simple like you know synchronous machine alternator problem okay an alternator is connected to infinite bus as shown in figure it delivers one per unit current at 0.8 power factor lagging at v equal to one per unit so this is going to be one per unit and current is one per unit at 0.8 power factor lag 36.87 degrees the reactance xd is 1.2 per unit determine the active power output and the steady state power limit keeping the active power fixed if the excitation is reduced to find the critical excitation uh, corresponding to operation at steady limit okay so first they ask like you know the active power output what is active power output v i cos pi Okay, so 1, 1.8 is going to be 0.8 per unit. Done. Okay, now what did they ask? And the steady state power limit. What is steady state power limit? Steady state power limit is going to be FVT by X sin delta at delta equal to 90. Okay, so delta equal to 90, this term will vanish. So EFVT by X. So we have to calculate EF. Okay, now in our like you know whatever we have done in synchronous, let us take the same. So EF at an angle delta equal to VT at an angle zero plus J excess into IA at an angle pi. Okay, so this will give you one at an angle zero plus J one point two into one at an angle minus thirty six point eight seven. Problem solved. Okay, so this value EF. 
I got 1.9697, 1.9697 at an angle roughly 29 degrees. Okay, so what is EF value 1.9697? Now calculate like you know maximum power is going to be EF VT by X. So 1.9697 into 1 divided by XD is 1.2. 1.2 we got it. Okay, so how much is that? I got 1.6414. 1.6414. Now the beauty, the beauty here is like you know he want to maintain the same power constant but that should be like you know steady state limit in the sense for example if I have in the present case if I try to draw power angle characteristic what is P max? P max is going to 1.6414 6414 where it is getting operated at point 8 point 8 okay now if i try to reduce ef for example in this equation if i reduce ef means of course delta also sine delta also if you consider if i reduce ef p maximum is going to be reduced now if you keep on reduce reduce p maximum reduce 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 for example at one instant if it is aligned with this okay at that condition output power will not change but this will be delta equal to 90 degrees now if you reduce ef less than this what will happen system will become unstable okay so they are asking that for example let me write here okay so ef minimum into vt sine sorry xs or xd equal to how much is the output power previously it was giving 0.8 so this is going to point eight. so ef minimum into 1 divided by 1.2 equal to 0.8 calculate EF minimum okay that is a variation you can prove so 0.8 into 1.2 so I got 0 0.955 0 0.955 that's it in this session let us see this problem a generator with constant 1 per unit terminal voltage supplies power through a step up transformer of 0.12 so generator with constant terminal voltage one per unit here terminal voltage and this transformer is 0.12 per unit and here this is one at an angle zero infinite bus okay to an infinite bus maintained one per unit the steady state stability power limit of the system is 6.25 okay and if one of the double circuit line is tripped then the resulting steady state power limit uh, they asked okay so point here is very simple they did not give the x value and they are saying like you know maximum power limit from here to here is going to be 6.25 per unit so let us calculate x okay so if we try to calculate x how much is p max here p1 maximum in the first case like you know v1 v2 1 per unit 1 per unit 1 into 1 divided by this is 0 0.12 okay so 0 0.12 plus if this is x this is x x by 2 is going to be how much is going to be 6.25 okay so this is going to be 2 divided by 0 0.24 plus x equal to 6.25 now from this calculate x value okay so how much is x value i got 0 0.08 okay now if this is tripped okay for example this is removed this is completely removed under that condition how much is the x from here to here 0 0.12 plus x only because this is removed okay so under that conditions again what is p2 maximum in the sense once one line is tripped okay is going to be here one here one one into one divided by 0 0.12 plus x 0 0.12 plus x is going to be with the x value is how much 0 0.08 so 1 divided by 0 0.12 plus 0 0.08 is going to be 5 per unit so answer is this over now let us think of one more question a 50 h 4 pole 500 mba 22 kV turbo generator is delivering a rated mba at 0.8 pf suddenly a fault occurs 
reducing its electrical power output by 40 percent electrical power output okay now neglect losses and constant power input to shaft because mechanical side we cannot change instantaneously the accelerating torque in the generator in mega newton meter at the time of fall as i told you previously also dimensions are very much important okay now let us calculate the accelerating power how much is the accelerating power input mechanical power is going to be constant but electrical power is going to be reduced by 40 percent or 240 percent like you know by 40 percent by 40 percent in the sense the electrical power output is going to be 60 percent okay so this is going to mechanical output power is going to be only one per unit okay or directly we can take value also not a problem anything can be taken for example how much is the before fault okay so before fault Mechanical equal to electrical. How much is that? 500 MVA at 0.8 power factor. Okay. Is going to be 400 megawatt. Okay. So mechanical power is going to be 400 megawatt only. But electrical power is reduced by 40% or reduced to 60% minus 60% of 400. Is going to be 0.4 into 400 is going to be 160 megawatt. Okay, now what is power? We know that torque multiplied by speed is power. What is speed? 2 pi n by 60. Okay, so they are asking torque. That's it. So torque equal to P into 60 divided by 2 pi n. How much is accelerating power? The accelerating torque equal to accelerating power. Okay, so accelerating power is 160 megawatt. In this is mega newton meter, it's fine into 60 divided by 2 by how much is the synchronous speed 4 pole 50 h 4 pole 50 h in the sense it is going to be 1500 okay so this value i got 1.0186 1.0186 mega newton meter okay 1.0186 is going to be the value in this problem, a synchronous generator is connected to an infinite bus with excitation voltage EF. The generator has excess value and is delivering real power P of 0.6 per unit to the bus. Assume infinite bus voltage is 1 per unit. Neglect stator resistance, the reactive power Q in per unit supplied by the generator to the bus under these conditions is. Okay. Like you know, in our synchronous machines, if you get any doubt in stability related to synchronous machines, go back and watch synchronous machine playlist. Okay. In synchronous machine, what was Q? Q equal to Vt by Xs into EF cos delta minus Vt. Okay. So in this, Vt we know, Xs we know, EF we know, Vt we know, delta has to be found. Okay, how to find delta? The active power they have given. What is active power P is nothing but EF VT by Xs sin delta equal to how much? 0.6 per unit. What is EF? EF value 1.3 into 1 divided by Xs value 1.1 into sin delta equal to 0.6. So you please find out delta. Okay, so how much delta I got? I got delta of 30.51 degrees 30.51 degrees okay now after that you please use delta here so react to power q is going to be vt 1 by xs 1.1 into ef cos delta 1.3 into cos 30.51 minus vt you are going to get the answer i got 0.1091 per unit so see here instability though because like you know the stability term is a scaring term normally for uh, ug guys okay so that's why they will give very small small question for example think of this question okay for this question also you have to go back and revise power angle characteristics okay of our synchronous machine now in this like you know consider a lossy transmission line with v1 v2 as sending and receiving and voltage respectively z and xr series impedance and reactance so series impedance and reactance okay in like you know in synchronous machine for example if at an angle delta alternator vt this is ra this is xs which is nothing but zs at an angle theta s okay we solved for the active power here 
okay so the moment it is active power if you calculate like you know maximum power if you calculate delta once you consider ra delta will become less than 90 okay for alternator and delta will be more than 90 for motor okay so motor it will become more than 90 motor more than 90 motor more than 90 leave it okay for generator it will become less than 90 go through power angle characteristics of synchronous machine now uh, respectively the steady state stability limit for the transmission line will be the moment you consider resistance okay automatically it will be less than v1 v2 by x done now next thing is let us think of the third case okay in the single machine infinite bus system this is actually very simple question but they have given for two marks in 2019 why because of online calcium okay in a single machine infinite bus system shown below the generator is delivering real power of 0.8 per unit at 0.8 power factor lagging to the infinite bus the power angle of generator in degrees simple question for example in this if i convert this into single line diagram this is 0.25 per unit and this is 0.2 per unit transformer and this is going to 0 0.4 0 0.4 will be 0.2 per unit parallel operation and this is going to be infinite bus one at an angle zero that's it okay now it is delivering active power p of 0.8 per unit at 0.8 power factor lag now what is meant by yes here it is going to p divided by power factor yes so one per unit now what is ia ia is going to be or i is going to be okay because in machines we can say armature current in power systems like you know transmission line current or i is enough so i value is going to be one one at an angle minus 36.87 degrees now calculate ef automatically you will get delta so what is ef equal to vt at an angle zero plus j excess into ia at an angle pi okay so this excess will become x and this ef will become here generator is only given so ef directly can be taken vt at an angle zero okay so this is going to be one at an angle zero plus j 0 0.25 0 0.2 0 0.2 so 0 0.4 0 0.65 so 0 0.65 into one at an angle minus 36.87 so i got ef of 1.4841 at an angle 20.5108 degrees or 20.511 we can say so answer is over because the power angle power angle of generator in degrees in degrees we got it